Sunny from That Dude Can Cook has a barbecue style oven brisket recipe that actually looked really tasty. However, with my trained eye, I noticed a few things were kinda off with his recipe. So with a few revisions, I tried out his recipe and the results absolutely blew my mind. This is unreal. But before we get there, let me show you how I fixed it. Okay, here we are starting with the untrimmed brisket. First thing we need to do is obviously trim it. So Sonny starts out with a fairly standard brisket trim. He's cutting straight down the brisket to give it some shape and also to be able to reveal more of the internal fat so he can get all the fat on the brisket down to about a quarter of an inch. He also removed the mohawk, which is that big flap of meat right there, which is really good, but Personally, I would have removed more of the mohawk and cut it a little bit deeper just to reveal and cut out the fat that's underneath that flap. Let's trim this area. Oh yeah. Ooh. I feel that this was some kind of silver Yikes. skin area right here, really tough. <laughs> no, that isn't any silver skin. <laughs> he just scalped the heck out of that brisket. <laughs> but I understand Sonny's confusion here because sometimes parts of the brisket fat cap can be kind of dry and leathery, and I think it just happens at some stage during the brisket processing, but don't take it off because it will still render beautifully just like any other part of the fat cap. But since he took off such a massive patch, he's not gonna get that beautiful golden rendered fat on like half of his brisket slices. But that said, outside of the major scalp, it's a pretty decent trim, especially considering Sunny probably doesn't cook brisket that often, so. Great job. Okay, seasoning wise here, I'm gonna go pretty simple with it. First off, my famous homemade rosemary salt. So Sunny's rosemary salt is just salt, rosemary, sage, garlic, and lemon zest. And because he's not smoking this brisket, the flavor that this salt is going to add is gonna be much appreciated. Mm. So outside of barbecue, when it comes to cooking, I'm like a complete idiot. So I have never tasted or smelled anything like this rosemary salt. This is gonna taste really good on the brisket. And then after the rosemary salt, he puts on some coarse pepper. And there we have it. Now I'm gonna set this on a sheet pan lined rack. See if we can make it fit there, there we go. So in my oven here, I have a pan on the bottom rack. I'm just gonna fill that totally with water. Okay, this is a horrible idea for an oven brisket. And I think this is where most of the problems he had with his finished brisket comes from. In my opinion, the best part of the brisket is the crust, also known as the bark. And this bark forms due to the Maillard reaction, which occurs when there's carbs and protein, which are both present in the meat, plus heat. Unfortunately, the Maillard reaction won't begin until the surface of the meat is dry. And because of the limited ventilation inside of an oven, there's just gonna be so much moisture and steam all over this brisket. So for this cook, the bark is gonna be in some serious trouble. With all my beef trimmings here, I'm definitely not gonna waste these. I'm just gonna cover with water, cold water, just like so. What's with this guy in water? <laughs> what you making? Brisket or beef top ramen? Hiya. So it does make sense to add water if you're making tallow on the stove because you wanna prevent the fat from burning. But he could have just put his fat trimmings in a foil tray underneath his brisket instead of that big pot of water. Makes it way easier. And I think it'll make a much better brisket at the end. This thing has been cooking for a couple hours now. It is tough as can be. Yep, <laughs> look at the bark. It's crusty like it should be, but the browning from the Maillard reaction is just so far behind. It should be so much darker than that at this stage of the cook. And I'm pretty sure it's because of that insanely humid oven. Okay, my beef tallow here has been rendering down all day. So we're gonna do the old Texas crux. We're gonna rack this thing up. I just have my butcher paper here and I'm just brushing this thing with the beef fat. This is a highly debated thing in the barbecue world. World. I think a lot of the pros would be against doing this. So many of the top Texas barbecue joints actually use beef tallow when they wrap their briskets. So maybe Sonny's talking about a taboo in the competition circuit of barbecue, but I'm really not sure. But using beef tallow isn't really cheating at all, like you might think. Just like I explained in my commentary on Google Foods' week-long brisket cook experiment, even if you completely submerge a brisket in beef tallow for an entire week, it still won't make the inside of it juicy. The beef tallow is more for the exterior of the meat, to give the crust some lubrication, to kinda soften it up a little bit. It's very similar to putting lotion on your mama's ashy elbows. Kinda wrap it like this, 
And then again, in some more butcher paper even. Here, I just got some more tallowed paper. I'm just gonna wrap it like this now. And now into the little foil boat it goes. Yeah, the foil here is pretty much useless. The butcher paper is already gonna speed up the cook, but I guess it does look kind of cool like that. But yeah, I'm absolutely gonna skip the extra foil when I try this later on. I got a little extra fat here. I'm just gonna get it on there. Hopefully it'll seep in. Once again, kind of useless. I mean, you can see the paper is already completely soaked with tallow before he puts more on. There's really no need for this in my opinion. Point, we're gonna return the brisket to the oven at 250 degrees Fahrenheit until it reaches a temp of 203 or 204. Once your brisket hits that target temp, we need to remove it from the oven. So Sunny gives this a really long rest overnight at 170 degrees Fahrenheit. And in my opinion, this is the best way to rest this specific style of brisket. In short, ovens cook really hot and fast just by nature of their function. And as such, the brisket needs a lot of time to rest to ensure that the collagen that's naturally chewy has enough time to break down into gelatin. However, personally, I think 170 degrees Fahrenheit is a little too hot to be resting a brisket for that long of a period of time. At that temperature, the moisture in the brisket is gonna cook off a lot faster than if you held it at 140 to 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, 170 degrees Fahrenheit is the lowest temperature I've seen a kitchen oven go, but you can actually recalibrate your oven to go even lower. Mine is currently set at negative 35 degrees, and you can do the same thing at home by just Googling your oven model and looking up the instructions. Okay, here we go. Woohoo! Oh boy, hello my friend. Wow. As you can see, the bark on this brisket looks kinda hard. And I think this is because of the extended time that the brisket needed to cook because of that big pot of water. Normally, the bark on a finished brisket has a slight crisp to it, but overall, it's pretty soft and pillowy. You can also see the point muscle on top looks dry, and that's just more evidence that it's overcooked. But even so, it's still plenty moist as you see Sunny break this apart. But overall, definitely one of the better briskets that I've reviewed on this channel, for sure. And I'm pretty sure he wasn't kidding when he tasted it. But using Sunny's recipe as a guideline, along with all the revisions I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna attempt to make a brisket even better than his. Okay, so no disrespect to Sunny, but my brisket looks like a different species than his. And it's overcooked in some parts and not perfect by any means, but for a first time oven brisket, I am super stoked with the way it turned out. The fat render is out of this world. On each slice at the top, there's this beautiful band of golden rendered fat. And the bark is really impressive. Like clearly it's not a smoked brisket bark. It's not completely black, but you know, the untrained eye would be absolutely fooled by this. Wow, my mind is blown. That is incredible. This is unreal. That is incredible. I don't even care that there's no smoke flavor on it. That is so delicious. Now, if I had to compare this with Joshua Weissman's oven barbecue recipe, this wins hands down. It's not even close. So check out the next video on your screen where I tried out Josh's barbecue recipe. And I'll see you guys over there. Man, you guys gotta try this.